welcome to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry, and this is Monday Quilt Chat. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you're all settled in with a nice warm drink or a cold one, depending on your choice, and ready to sit down and chat. Listen to me basically chat about what's in my brain for this week. And I hope that uh, you enjoy this little chat session and maybe it'll encourage you, motivate you to get going on some of your sewing projects, your quilts, your crafts, whatever it may be. Uh, I do a little bit of everything, but mostly quilting. So that's what we'll be talking about today, primarily. And uh, I, do, I do have a little bit of a craft project I want to talk to you about here in a minute. But I want to get back to what happened over the weekend with me. Uh, did I get anything done? Did I start anything new? What did I do? That's usually the first part of, of this little chat if you're new here. And welcome to all the new subscribers. And if any of you are not subscribed yet, please do so. If you see the subscribe word anywhere on your screen there, uh, touch it and hit the black bell so you'll be notified of all these videos. There's quite a variety of things that goes on here. I have videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and they all have a certain sort of theme to them. If you get to watch and you'll catch on. And then uh, also I want to mention that in the description box, there's a lot more information there. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit here uh, in a minute. So uh, first of all, like I said, talk about what happened this weekend. Well, after I left you on Friday, which, you know, I always make that video late on Thursdays, not late at night, but uh, usually hmm, somewhere around 5 or 5.30, I'm finished filming it. And then later on that evening, it gets edited. So keep that in mind too. If you want to send your photographs in of your, your quilt projects for the Finish It Friday episode, uh, get them in before maybe two or three o'clock on, on Friday, I mean on Thursday, and they'll, they'll probably most likely be on that Friday's episode. So um, I had a great group of them this past week. So if you haven't seen the Friday video of, what would that have been, the 31st? Yeah, the 31st, that one is a good one. So I go back and watch that if you haven't had a chance yet. And you can get an idea of, of how the, the quilt show goes and how you can participate in that. And that information is also in the description box of all of yeah of all my videos. It's 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 on all of them. So anyway, getting back again to what happened after I left you on Friday. Well, Friday I woke up not feeling so well. I was having uh, some some pain that I get once in a while that has to do with a kidney stone that I have. I've had it for years and years and years. Uh, everybody knows it's there, <laughs> but uh, nothing, nothing is going to be done about it until something has to be done about it. But occasionally it will flare up and the doctor describes it as it will rattle around from time to time. And that's true. It's kind of what it feels like. Though. There's something just kind of Eh, kind of pinching and, and carrying on in there and it just kind of makes me feel kind of out of it for the day and on a lot of different levels so I took a sick day on Friday <laughs> I did not do any type of anything up here uh, last Friday nor and on any other level did I do anything so I just rested up and then the next day I was fine pretty much fine yeah so that would have been Saturday so Saturday I got in my head I was going to put another quilt on the long arm because I just taken off one and there sits the empty long arm and we can't have that going on for very long so i picked out a quilt from my m multiple quilt tops that i have and i came up here to make a backing for it i have a lot of four and five yard pieces of fabric where you know if the quilt's under 
you know, a certain size, I can usually get a backing out of about four and a half yards of fabric. And then I just sew those two together and that makes a perfect backing. And um, I came up here to do that and none of my outlets were working. The lights would work. Um, what else was working? I think just the lights is all I, all, all I could get to come on. The sewing machine wouldn't turn on. The floor lamps wouldn't turn on. The iron wouldn't turn on. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, what's going on here? So I finally figured out, okay, it's just the outlets. After I played with the breakers multiple different ways, I figured out it's just the outlets. So to make a long story short, it was one of the breakers needed to be replaced. And I am putting quite the load on the breaker box that I have here. So I'm probably going to have to kind of change my ways as far as what I leave plugged in because uh, even things that just have a light on them, like at the iron, will have a light on it if you keep it plugged in that I need to uh, cool it down a little bit <laughs> by unplugging some things that have lights and things like that on them. So that might help me preserve the life of the new breaker that Mark put in. Thank goodness he knows how to do just about anything and he got that straightened out for me. All the while draining our hot water heater as it was well overdue of needing to be done. And you know, when you deal with plumbing, one thing kind of leads to another. And it ended up uh, that we replaced a shower head we cleaned out all the little filters of the sink faucets, stuff like that. And, you know, you can't do plumbing without running to the hardware store three or four times. So that took place. So when he was gone, I was in the house while the water heater was still draining out, which took hours and meant that we had to have a door open. So anytime he would leave, I'd have to go down there. But anyway, I couldn't do much up here for a little while until that breaker got fixed. And so I finally did, much, much, much later than I had planned, uh, get that backing done. And the one that I'm going to do, to do on the long arm is the windmill garden. Remember a couple of years ago, I believe this was my very first sew along that we did. And I had, I think, a color for each week to make a block out of. And it was a windmill shaped block. And, uh, you know, it was very, 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 very simple. So that quilt top needs to be done. It needs to be quilted. I never did get that quilted by Mary. Uh, I had some more important ones that I wanted to get quilted by her back when she was doing them for me. So that's the one I picked. I'm getting a little more confident in, you know, picking some of my quilt tops that, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of ready to take the risk of doing it on my long arm because, you know, I'm new and I, I could still make major catastrophic mistakes, <laughs> but I'm feeling a little more confident. So I think I'm going to, well, I know I'm going to be doing that one this week at some point coming up. Um, the Blues Batiks quilt. I'm also trying to get together the backing for that. And it's going to have to be pieced and I keep going back and forth. I don't have a Batik 108. I kind of wish I do, did have one and I had opportunity to get one and then I decided not to because I started that project not only for the, the charitable aspect of it, but also because I have an overflow of batik fabric that hasn't been touched for a long time. And I wanted to make a dent in that. So I am going to use some of my yardage that I have of batiks, different batiks that I have. Uh, I found three pieces that are with the fabric by two yards. So if I put all of those together, it's going to be one hundred and let me see here, 135, and I need about 130, because uh, like I was saying on Friday, 
it's 120 inches long, the top. So I need some extra for the long arming, a little bit, a few inches on each end. Um, so 135 will be plenty if I strip all those together horizontally. But I have 72 inches wide and the quilt is 96 inches wide. So I wanted to use up some of these extra ones that I have left of the blocks into the backing. And I've been mathing, I've been quilt mathing, and I'm not coming up with anything solid yet on, on that. But I really, 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 really want to get that done in the next couple days so I can get that sent out. Um, yeah, I'm sending that to Mary. She said she would. Bless her heart. <laughs> I'm going to get it out to her so she can get it done so we can get it back and do our auction. So it's a process, isn't it? It's just a long process. You think you're going to do something in a jiffy and even got help from all of you subscribers and and I'm still kind of dragging along here well I'm not dragging um, I, it's just taken this amount of time I'm not the fastest quilter in the in the Midwest <laughs> maybe I'll get faster one of these days not likely because I'm getting ready to step into another decade here in a couple of months and um, I'm not very encouraged about my speed uh, going forward <laughs> anyway that's that's about what I got done I got I got these put together in pairs on Saturday I got my backing for my windmill garden done on Saturday I, I've still got to attach it to the long arm and then I've got a bunch of big batik fabrics laying over there on the cutting table I'm trying to figure out a configuration that I can put these in there and still have plenty around the edges to be cut off after it's long armed without losing these. It shouldn't be that hard, but I think I might be overthinking it, but I'm going to um, stop it <laughs> and get down to business here and, and get that get that going today. Let's let's do it today and get it all get it out of here. With that being said, let's talk a little bit about schedule. I'm going to be out of town for a long weekend uh, coming up this week. So I wanted to let you know now. And I will also try to remember to put something in the Facebook group to help you remember that things are kind of going to be on different days. It's the same. You're not going to miss a video. They're just going to be on different days. So here's what's going to happen. This week, you, of course, you've got this video like normal. Wednesday should be like normal. The Finish It Friday video will come out Thursday morning. So if you want to send anything in for the Finish It Friday episode, your photos, uh, send them by two or three-ish on Wednesday of this week. I've already got some of your finishes in, but I could use a few more if there's any of you out there that have some finishes that you want to share. So get those in by Wednesday. You'll see the video on Thursday. So you're going to get Monday, Wednesday, Thursday this week. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then it's going to skip up to probably Tuesday morning. Crossing my fingers, I'll let you know. If it's not Tuesday morning, it'll be Tuesday during the day. It could possibly be late on Monday. So anywhere late Monday, early Tuesday, or sometime during the day on Tuesday. <laughs> So, if you don't see it on Monday is my point, look for it on Tuesday at some point. Uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm kind of thinking it'll be Tuesday morning uh, at the normal 6 a.m. Eastern time. So, that's how that's going to go. And then the rest of next week should be normal. You have something on Wednesday and something on Friday. 
So just keep that in mind. Um, let's say I'll, I'll try to put a little note on the Facebook group too in case anybody has forgotten all this or didn't see this video in time and is wondering where did I go? Did I fall off the face of the earth? <laughs> Thanks for worrying about me like that by the way but it's all fine. It's just a little jumbled up. You'll get your videos. The videos will be there one way or another. So I see my husband walking around outside with a big piece of cardboard. I don't know what that's about. He might stop in here in a minute. I don't think he'll get on camera though. He might. By the way, he has a YouTube channel. I don't know if you know this, but he has a YouTube channel called Mark's Astro Journey. And he is an astrophotographist. Is that how you say that? I think that's how you say it. But that is in my description box. You can find all kinds of stuff in the description box. Speaking of which, the description box. I have some new affiliates. I don't remember who I told you that I have affiliates for. But if you look in the description box, there's a ton of affiliates in there. Now what that means is they, a store, a business has said, okay, hey, if you mention it, and somebody buys something from your mention, we'll give you a percentage. And it could be 3%, 5%, 10%. It doesn't get added on to your purchase. Your purchase is your purchase. Whatever they're selling it for, that's all you're paying. But they'll send me a little something. And uh, if, I, if you use the link that's connected to, to the affiliate here, that's how I get credit. So if you're thinking, hey, I need a walking foot for my baby lock or my brother or my singer, I'm going to go out to sewing parts online and see if they have it. Then go to my link first. No telling what page will come up, but their, probably their home page will come up. And then you can do your search, make your purchases, purchase other stuff you need while you're there and, and check out. And it all gets kind of filtered in through this system. And then eventually I get a little percentage of it. That's how that works. No cost to you whatsoever, but it does give me a little something. And by all means, if it's too much trouble to go find a link under my description box one day when you need something, forget it. Just just go buy your stuff. I don't care. But if you want to support the channel a little bit more uh, than just watching the videos, which watching the videos from start to finish is the best way to support my channel. So don't skip out early. Go ahead and watch it all the way to the end, even if you don't have time. Now, if you have to pause it, go do something and come back to it later, that's going to count. So, you know, it'll pick up where you left off and then you'll get to the end and it'll be like you never left. So that's, that's another thing too, because sometimes I have some videos that are a little bit lengthy and I know when I see some of the people that I'm subscribed to have an hour long video, I don't usually watch it all at the, at one sitting. Uh, I mean, unless I'm laying in bed trying to go to sleep or something, I probably wouldn't ever just sit and watch an hour long video all in one sitting. Sometimes it will happen. If it's, it's, if it's a podcast type of thing and I'm sitting here sewing and I don't have to look at the screen to see what's going on in the video, then yeah, but anything I need to actually have my eyes on, I'm not going to watch an hour of that unless I am absolutely done for the day. <laughs> And even then, I'm kind of stingy with, with what I watch. So, <clears throat> anyway, I wanted to go over with you from the description box what my links are, in case you didn't know. These are the ones that send me a percentage sooner or later. Now, I mentioned a few weeks ago that uh, I have a Fat Quarter Shop affiliate affiliation. I do not. It is, being, it is in the approval stage. I thought it had gotten approved, but I went back and looked and it had not gotten approved, but it's going through the approval process and I do not have a link yet. So I, let's all keep our fingers crossed on that one. Um, I was really shocked to go out 
to the website that sh that shows you all these links that you can grab. Uh, I was really surprised to see them out there because they have not been out there before. And I thought, hmm, I'm going to apply for that one. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's in the process. I think they themselves actually approve it. Whereas some of them, like um, Connecting Threads, uh, um, the Fabric Hut, different ones, they'll automatically, if you say you've got a YouTube channel, they'll automatically approve you. But I think Fat Quarter wants to be a little bit more particular with who they have as uh, an affiliate. I may not get approved. I don't know. So, look for that one in the future. But what I do have is Connecting Threads. And they are a, a very good one. They have a high percentage. It's like 10%. So, if you go into Connecting Threads and buy a kit for $150, then they're going to send me $15. And it won't be extra to you. And then Sewing Machines Plus and sewing parts online and you know those kind of look a little similar they have their red logo and everything and i even get them mixed up sometimes which one's which and both of those sewing machines plus and sewing parts online have other things besides just parts and and machines but by all means you know if you are okay with your research on buying a machine and you want to go through them and, and buy one, wow, that would be awesome if you'd use my link. That would just be awesome. Uh, sewing Machines Plus and Sewing Parts Online. They have also, uh, some of them have fabric. Not the greatest price, but if it's something you need and you can't find anywhere else, maybe. And then they also have notions and smaller items. Some of them have uh, the Aero furniture as well. You know, like the my Laverne and Shirley um, tables sewing machine table I have they have that that's on sale by the way $14.99 I paid I want to say $17.99 for mine on Wayfair and that's been a couple years ago so uh, they've got it down to $14.99 when does the price go down on a sewing table but yeah they might be phasing it out or something I don't know but I, I think that's a great deal so one of those has it. I don't know if it's Sewing Machines Plus or Sewing Parts Online. But the links are in here if you want to grab them and go look. Also, uh, Sewing Chairs. Um, trying to think. Ironing Boards. Stuff like that. And then there's Annie's Kit Clubs. I have one for them. The Fabric Hut. And then I also have an Amazon. Now you'll notice... If you go looking in my Amazon link, it's just a link to a, a sewing product. Right now, I have the Panasonic Cordless Iron. But if you go and use that link and then go shop and search and shop for whatever it is you're looking for, and it could be groceries <laughs> or vitamins or clothing or it could be anything on Amazon that you go in there to, to buy, maybe something you buy on a regular basis, uh, just go to this Panasonic cordless iron link and start shopping for whatever it is that you need. And I don't think, I don't remember their percentage. I don't think it's super high, but there are some items that are 5%, I think. So check it out. That's the part underneath this video. That ha there's the title of the video and then it says more dot dot dot. If you touch that, then this other blank, not blank, but page where I've typed has all this information on it. Uh, it also has my email, uh, the Facebook group, how to join that, the Instagram, my uh, business address. If, you, if you're inclined to send something or like with these where I have a so long type thing where I ask you to send me something or something like that. The address for that is, is there. And then I have my Etsy shop. I have Mary the Long Armor on there. Ernest Rules Etsy shop. Uh, my husband's channel. If you want to subscribe to it. Or if you know someone who is into astrophotography. And would like to see how his journey is going. He's kind of new at all this stuff. But it is, he's kind of a brainiac type. Where you know he can figure all this stuff out. So he'll get it figured out. And he has, uh, it has gotten built. 
I don't even know how to describe it, but it's it's some some sort of room in the top of a new building that we have for our RV where he can slide the roof off, just part of the roof, and leave his telescope on a pier that's getting constructed and be able to go out there and do his astrophotography from that room. And yes, that means we'll get some of that stuff out of my house. <laughs> Because there's a bunch of equipment that goes with that stuff. So all that is out there in the description box. So if you're not uh, usually one to go out and, and poke around in people's description boxes, maybe you can start here and see what all you can find. All of your uh, subscriptions that you have on YouTube, they all have uh, description boxes. And some put a lot of stuff out there that you might want to use. Um, I've been known to put PDFs out there of patterns I've designed or instructions on a project that I did, things like that. So there you go. Now you know how to use the description box and how it can help you and it can help me too. So I appreciate your support on that. No pressure, no pressure whatsoever. I'm not gonna harp on it. I just wanna make sure that everybody knows where everything is. So what else is going on? I have no new purchases. I have some things coming. I have a couple of things coming, but I don't have them yet. Oh, here's the thing I was wanting to show you. I got these from Menards. And I'm thinking about redoing my thing back here. These little quilts, I love showing them but they evoke so many questions and you can't find the patterns anymore. Every time I change them out, I get a handful of people who say, oh, what's that pattern? What's this pattern? And they go looking, no, I can't find it, can't find it. You know, I tell them, you're probably not gonna find it, but <laughs> it's this. Uh, yeah, so not that I won't ever use those back there, but I'm thinking about doing something else. Um, for a little while and see how I like it. You know how I have this little shelf right here? Little iron shelf that's in the shape of an octagon. Well, I found these. And I thought these would be cute. And I think it's about the same size. Well, it's a little bit smaller. I thought it would be cute to put these around this and maybe put some fabric on them or maybe some feature fabric or a line of fabric of their main prints or something like that. I have it upside down. There's two in a package. I got these at Menards and this actually came from their online, uh, their newsletter or their email that comes through every day. For some reason I'm getting that and they have a lot of odd things on there that are like dirt cheap. It's almost like Timu stuff or something. And uh, I, they have these. Well, they cost I got three packages of these, so I have six. And with that one, that would make seven. And you know you always want to hang things in odd numbers. Although I don't have, yeah, I have five. Let me show you what these cost. I don't know if you can just go on Menards and search for them or not. Hexagon canvas, 10 inches, two pack. They were $3.36 for a two pack. So I got these six for 10.08. That was a subtotal. I think it was, you know, the, the would it be the tax, three, six? Yeah, you would have tax on that. But I just had them shipped to the store and went and picked them up, so I didn't have shipping. But you can have them shipped. You can have things like this shipped. So, yeah. I'm gonna play with these some this week and see what see what happens. Uh, Menards. Go online and see if you can find them. They're called Artist Concepts. That's the name. Two pack of triple primed acid free unique shaped canvas for all types of paint. You can paint on them. They're canvases just like this. See? But I like to strap fabric onto them. You know? Just staple it on. And then I could change it out. I think I could change it out from time to time, you know, if I had something different that I wanted to display. 
would also be fun to do feature, like your Tula feature stuff. Feature fabrics, like last week I was showing you the besties line with the dogs and the turtles. I was saying that was an iguana and a bunch of you said, no, that's not an iguana, that's a turtle. <laughs> so I had to go back and look and sure enough, it's a turtle. So anyway, I thought I might use something like that. I only have fat quarters though, so I don't know. If I get started on that quilt soon, I'll probably have to use you know the most prominent one and the others won't probably won't have enough fabric to get it in the right position but uh yeah i thought that would be a fun little project to do a little craft project okay so what else i am going to take some sewing with me probably i don't know um oh another thing that i did while i was out of commission with the outlets is I processed some scraps. So I had scraps from the quilt that I had uh, up on Finish It Friday. I had those that I needed to process. And then some from... I had some other pieces over there that I wanted to process. So I worked on those. I'm going to try to keep up on processing my scraps. And that came out of my head just now because when I said I'm going to take some sewing with me and I was like, or should I take some scrap processing? <laughs> One of the two. I'll, I'll take, um, I don't know what I'll take. I have to think about that. I have to think about what I want to take with me. But I'm not going to have a ton of time, but I may want to do some sewing. Maybe I'll take my, my hexagon, my, uh, what is it called? English paper piecing hexagons with me. I haven't done that in a while. But we don't talk about it. <laughs> okay, so berry wreath. I'm still moving along. Uh, just about got all my tiny, tiny pieces uh, glued and sewn. And let's see. What else am I working on? You saw my peaceful baskets. Uh, what else? I think that's all I'm moving on. Oh, the, um, the bow ties. I have, um, when I couldn't sew, yes, that's something I did Saturday too. I made up, let me show you. I made up all the rest of my three and a half inch squares into little, little kits. So once I get all these sewn, I'll see what I got and then I'll put them together. I don't think that's going to happen this week. I might get some of the sewing done of these, but I don't think I'll probably get, I don't know, I might. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, let's get on to our art quilt of the week. This is called, I'll put a picture right here. This is called Gilded Gardens and it's 53 by 53 by Jamie Kuba of Byron, Minnesota. This Sharon Chamber pattern appealed to Jamie with its special effects added with hand embroidery, Jamie's favorite part. Included are hand dyed focal fabrics for applique, embellished with silk threads. She designed her own free motion quilting on her stationary machine. A ribbon winner at the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show, Madison, Wisconsin, and first place in the workmanship category at the Minnesota Quilt Show in St. Cloud, Minnesota. So the pattern is called Silk Society Stash by Sharon Chamber and Christy Fincher. And isn't this a beauty? Look at those bouquets of flowers and all of this is embroidery. And that's what she loves with silk threads added in there. And look, look at the, um, the quilting that she did on her stationary machine. Free motion quilting on her stationary machine. Um, when they say stationary machine, I think they're talking about, uh, it's kind of a long arm, but it's, you sit and you, you're still moving like you do with your domestic. Is that what a stationary machine is? Or is that an embroidery machine? I'm not sure. Y'all probably know better than I do. I don't have an embroidery machine. And as of right now, I don't have interest in an embroidery machine. Um... But boy, look at that. Just look at those flowers and the gold. It's called Gilded Gardens. 
appropriate name. And hopefully the, the photo also shows you uh, a close-up of all that detail there. I'll try to get that to where you can see that too. Beautiful, beautiful work. That would definitely need to be hung on a wall and uh, admired. Very beautiful. All right, there again, gets us motivated to sharpen our skills or learn new skills, whatever it takes to make the beautiful things that we want to make in our quilt rooms. So that will be it today. I hope you have a, a very productive week and sew a little bit every day if you can. Keep things moving, keep those projects going so that you can start more projects because that's, that's how I roll. All right, have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.